Whoa, hey, Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> Where did you go? What happened? I was just adjusting my camera right up to the second. How's it, How's going? it going? Good. How are you? It, I'm super excited. I think today's drawing is going to be, I don't know, I don't want to say best of the week, but it's going to be a really good one. Pen, pen and um, paper is probably my favorite kind of drawings, that, like when I get to watch somebody actually do them. Today is a very happy, sad day for me, Gina. I'm happy because we have a very exciting video to watch today and to talk about. I'm sad because it's the last day of Art O'Ree. It's been so right. much fun this week. We've had it's such a, a good time. Yeah, it's been great. We've had such a good time. We've had so many great artists, real pros, not only talented artists, but super nice people to come on and talk with us and talk to our viewers. And I personally have learned a lot about art that I didn't know. And I, I really think that our viewers have. We've gotten so many cool, inspiring, neat submissions from people who've been drawing along at home and just really knocking them out of the park way better, I'll admit, than I even thought they would do. They're just so cool and good. I hate that today's the last day, but it's been fun. I agree. It's been a great experience. And Gina, I've, been, I've really enjoyed doing it with you. It's been a lot of fun. It has been fun. And I've got good news for you, Aaron, just because we're not going to be live again tomorrow with Artery. All of these videos are still on our Facebook page. If you didn't, if you missed today, if you missed any day this week, we had a video you missed. So you can scroll back down this page, find it, paint along, sketch along, draw along with our professional illustrators. Um, let's think back through the week. Let's think back through the week and then let's do something we haven't done all week. Give some shout outs. What do you think about that? Yeah. yeah, I think that's a great idea. Okay, so, so way back to Monday, what mm -hmm. happened? Uh, we had that Luke was, on. Yes, and, and yes, and, and Luke was a nice gentleman who was kind of an art expert, an art aficionado, and mm -hmm. he, I thought, we had a really interesting discussion about art as uh, storytelling, which is something I had never really thought about. You know, I'm a guy who works with words a lot for Boys Life Magazine, so I'm used to telling stories with words. And I thought Luke had a really interesting philosophy on art telling story with a picture. And we talked, he showed us a few examples of just a single picture, just one frame in a picture, and your mind can just go all kinds of places with the story that that picture is telling. Really neat stuff, a really interesting perspective that I honestly had not thought of before. And it's a, he showed us a game you can play at home where you pull up a piece of art and then take a, a try at naming it. There's no right or wrong name. You're just coming up with your own. So I challenge you at home with your parents' permission to Google Norman Rockwell paintings maybe and scroll mm -hmm. through each and try to give them a name. That's fun. Yeah, We had a lot of fun. He had, he, it was pretty neat. He said that when he would go to an art museum, before looking at the little piece of paper that has the title of the picture on it, he would come up with the name in his mind. And I think you could probably do that online too. You know, you can visit a lot of art museums virtually, right? So right. when you see examples of their art, before you look at the title and what the artists call it, maybe think of it, it's a fun game, think of a title yourself, what it means to you, what kind of story it's telling to you, and then see how it compares with what the artist had in mind. That's a good point. We, I think a lot of us are waiting for our, our lives to go back to normal or a new normal, but we shouldn't take for granted that right now we can really go through and see some things we may never be able to see again for free, like art in a lot of museums. A lot of opportunities out there. Yeah. You just got to go find yep. them. I would say, like you said, grab a trusted adult, sit down, you know, Google art museums and certainly Norman Rockwell. If you want to Google Norman Rockwell boy's life, I can tell you from experience, you'll get a lot of neat stuff from there because he did a totally. lot of, in case people don't know, he illustrated a lot of Boys Life covers for many, many years. Um, okay, so also on Monday, we talked and learned from Joey Ellis. Mm -hmm. You remember that? He did I a absolutely remember. And paper sketch along with a computer sketch. Yeah, see, I really liked Joey's video because it was almost kind of, I don't want to say two extremes, but he had a really high-tech fancy computer system that I think was probably pretty expensive that a lot of people probably wouldn't go out and buy right now, but it right. was really cool to see how it works. But he also showed a, uh, a much more like the other end, sketching with a pencil on a piece of paper. And I thought it was really cool to show how productive and creative you can be with both, both, you know, both medium, right? You can, and even a lot of his sketches, he said, start off still, even though he's got that fancy equipment, it starts off with a pencil and paper. And he told us mm -hmm. the story about for him, 
you know, he didn't start day one with that cool computer. That came way down the line as he started working on his art, getting more and more work and things like that. And that came down the line. So I thought that was kind of cool. It's fun to I see agree. that. Yeah, it's fun to see those machines and, and that high tech equipment at work. And it's also cool to see, though, that, you know, he didn't just start that from day one. It started with the way right. that we could all start with a pencil and a piece of paper. Totally agree. And he also, I was kind of thrown, taken back by, like, yeah, you may not have his exact computer set up right now, but there are some little affordable things you can do if you do want to get into computer graphics. He um, mentioned Procreate, which is a $10 app. You pay $10 for it once and you have it for life. Um, and he mentioned his light, his like backlight that he'd used to trace with. I think he also said it was $10 on Amazon. I think that's pretty impressive. And I, I mean, $10 is worth a lot. I'm not downplaying that, but it is something I think a lot of our viewers could eventually save up for, or maybe talk their parents into investing in for them potentially. So I, I bet that if you, that. and I bet that if you're, if you're a young person watching right now, and you might have some experience going to your parents and saying, Hey, I want to buy this video game for 30 or 40 bucks. And a lot of times you might get some resistance. I bet the answer might be a little bit different. If you said, I want to spend 10 bucks on this app. That's going to help me draw. Yes. I just from personal experience and you still may have to do some convincing and selling, but try it, give it a shot and talk and, you know, talk about the art merit badge and, and what you've learned from watching these videos. So yeah. I just and want to show them what thing you've drawn this up. week. Yeah, I just want to clarify one thing you said. You said, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong here, what you said is that if there are some folks who would say they're just now turning in, whoa, what is this Ardo Re thing I'm learning about? I think what you're trying to say is that it's not too late for them to go back and watch the first four videos that we did this week and then no. pick up with this one. All these videos are, are on the Boys Life Facebook page and go in the video section. You can see them all. You can start from the beginning. You can probably even do them out of order, right? It's not like a TV show that you have to watch in order, right? And you can probably go in any order you want to, whatever looks the best right. to you. Watch today. We will be sketching uh, with pen and paper in a few minutes. You can go back to the beginning of the week, do all five days. And by the end of your five day, you know, sketch -a -thon, you will have four pieces of art or more to show your merit badge counselor and requirement four of the art merit badge tasks you with rendering an image in four different ways. So we're trying to help you complete that this week, or you might just be doing it for fun. Um, we're going to show you what you can do with your drawings. If you're just drawing for fun in a few minutes, but I think let's quickly talk about Tuesday. Who did we have? Was that Eric's day? I think Tuesday was Eric's day. If I remember. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we had our design director on. Eric is the design director for the uh, magazine division at the Boy Scouts of America National Office. Obviously a very talented designer and artist himself, and he demonstrated acrylic painting, which he said that he actually hadn't done a lot of in many years, but I, I think it was kind of like tell. riding a bike and it all came back. And acrylic is an interesting next step because, you know, most people probably don't have acrylic paints laying around the house. Maybe they do, but not, you know, acrylic little hobby paints. They're not that expensive. You can buy them from any hobby shop. You can also buy them from, uh, you know, the real big stores that sell everything that have a hobby section in them, right? Uh, he also recommended some special paper to buy for acrylic paint because regular paper is not sturdy enough to hold the extra weight. The acrylic, the weight of the acrylic paint is a little bit heavier than pencil and uh, pen, things like that. So it was still minimal expenses, very easy, and a lot of cool texture i really like the part where he mentioned how uh you know you can paint with uh, acrylic paint and it you know it's almost kind of 3d right it, it will it comes off the page right. a little bit to add to it and uh, that was really cool you know you can't do that with a computer screen really it's not the same so that's an advantage of you know doing it kind of the old-fashioned way uh, a little bit of prep required but not an unreasonable amount very cool very well, fun I, he painted Grizz, which was pretty cool. We've been seeing a lot of you at home painted Grizz along with them. You've been submitting it to share with us. You know, I remember having acrylics in our house all the time growing up. Like, I just remember, like, like stumbling upon them. They'd be, like, stashed away somewhere and not really knowing what they were, thinking, like, these are paints mom uses, and I don't get to touch them because she says that they will ruin clothes. 
Like that was the extent of it. I bet a lot of you at home have that same experience and maybe you could talk to your mom or dad and see, hey, can I bust out those acrylics and try the tutorial um, Eric showed from Tuesday? So mm -hmm. cool. Wednesday, yeah. Wednesday we had Daryl on and he drew Otto, yes. is that right? I believe that is correct, yes. And Daryl is- that was like a, kind of a, oh, go ahead. I'll just tell you, Daryl, uh, for those of you who don't know, is, is a regular contributor to Boy's Life. He does not work for us full time, but we are very lucky to have his services in the comic section of our magazine every month. And he was very nice to come on with us and talk about his technique, which was, remind me, what did he talk about, Gina? Pencil and paper, but it right. was pretty legit. That's the only right. way I can put it. It was like a, yeah. I would say it was, I want to say it was kind of a challenging drawing, but I wouldn't know by looking at the art you guys have submitted. It looks exceptional. Yes, that's one thing that's been really amazing this week is watching these guys do it, and and Daryl in particular. It did. It did not. You know, it doesn't look easy. But then when we see the work that you guys send in, we realize that man, I, I, maybe we just have some really talented people watching. Maybe right. it's a combination of that and the fact that you know the biggest challenge is is not the technique the biggest challenge is just sitting down and doing it and once we yeah. got people over that one i mean it was it, it was really it. cool yeah and that was a good one it's really i think it's easy to find a pencil and paper and i think it's easy to find a pen and paper so today in a few minutes that's going to be a really fun drawing for you guys to do along with another regular contributor to boys life magazine mike moran um but that's coming up Yesterday, we did watercolors with Kevin, who's our art director for Boys Life. Mm -hmm. yep. And he painted none other than, do you remember his name, Aaron? Um, Squirtle? Yeah. Good. Yes, yes. Very good. I'm learning my Pokemon, Gina. I'm yeah. learning my Pokemon, finally. Yes. We're hoping by Kevin, next Monday for Trek It 2, you'll be just obsessed. Like, you'll look, like, kind of tired and, like, out of it because you've been playing Pokemon all weekend. I've been catching, just got to catch them all this weekend, yeah. probably. Maybe Kevin, catch them all. Exactly. Kevin is a good friend of ours, a guy who we're, we're lucky enough to work with every day in the Boys Life office. And you can find Kevin's work in Boys Life magazine every month certainly and but also in just random spots if you see little illustrations there's a really good chance that kevin was the one behind that right. a lot of times he does really good, yeah yes yes he does a really good job of kind of blending in his illustrations with photography and things like that and we're working him into the layout of the magazine and we were lucky to have him i think uh, his experience with watercolors was similar to eric's experience with acrylics in that it's not necessarily something he does, you know, every day. But again, for someone like that, it's like riding a bike. And once again, the submissions that we get from people who I think most of them had never done it before. I find it hard to believe because it's so good. I but know. I'm pretty sure most of them, this was their first time. I, it's amazing. And um, so I'm really glad. I think people obviously got a lot out of it because they certainly produced and turned in some really quality artwork yeah let's give a shout out to some of the people who've been watching um day after day or some of these people who are just watching today we've got pat 4118 in the house hey guys we have shout out to denise shout out to lynn i've seen her watching quite a few day she wants to know if we're going to view some people's comics yes we are we're going to view some in just a second right after i finish these shout outs denise shout out lynn another lynn shout out um lynn's wondering if you've caught all 800 pokemon or if you're going to and, and then denise makes the comment kevin we had on yesterday we still don't know if he is hawkeye or not um it's pretty funny <laughs> people are ready they've got their pens they've got their paper before we show you guys mike's tutorial on the pen and paper illustration maybe we should look at some art that was submitted. What do you think? I would love to see the artwork that was submitted by people who have been watching these videos. It looks like first we've got William from Chicago and that right. I believe is watercolor, don't you think? I think it is. Yes. And that now is, is that a Pokemon, Gina? You know, that's it's, my question for you. It looks like a hedgehog to me. Okay. All right. Cause remember we had a butterfly 
and I thought it was a butterfly, but it turns out it was a Pokemon. We had a right. turtle, and I thought it was a turtle, but it turned out it was a squirtle. This is a hedgehog. I think it's a hedgehog, but someone is going to have to let me know if it's not actually a Pokemon. I don't know, but people whatever are it is, saying it is, and people are saying it isn't. Okay. So well, I don't know either. So we're getting a lot Regardless. of it is. It is. It is. Okay. Now, the, if I was done it, with watercolor, I'm amazed with the ability to, like, I don't know, the lines are pretty precise, so I'm impressed is all. I'm really impressed. I wonder if they started with a sketch and then, uh, which is kind of what Kevin did, right? Started with the sketch and then you do water watercoloring around it. I'm going to just draw attention real quick to the different shades of green. I love, I don't know if they did this on purpose or not, but either way, it looks great how some spots are darker. Some spots of that green hedgehog head are lighter, which really gives it a cool sense of, of depth. And I also like the, the pink cheeks uh, or whatever that is. It looks like, you know, on the sides there. It yes. looks really okay. cool. We've got official word that it is indeed a Pokemon. And I think that that's like a flower. It's Shaman, Shaman, the Pokemon. Okay. Okay, I think cool. it looks like a hedgehog of sorts. Like you notice that Squirtle also looks like a turtle. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. So, I don't know. Love yeah. it. They, they nailed it. Oh, now Quinn cute. has drawn a very cute painting here. Again, this looks really cool. And okay. So once again, I love the, the green texture in, in the head there. And I, again, I don't know how much of that is on purpose and how much of that is just the way the watercolor looks, but I love how some of it is darker. Some of it is lighter. I think that's just an advantage of watercolor. That's just the way it looked. And one thing that Kevin talked about yesterday is in order to get white out of watercolor, you have to let the paper shine through. Because once you paint over it within a color, you cannot paint over it again with white. So I think that Quinn did a really good job of letting that white, you know, right behind the turtle shell. That's the paper color, I bet. He didn't mess up. And yeah, the cloud at the very top to me or, 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 or the speech bubble or whatever that is that looks like to me the color of the paper, which is really yeah. cool and a really creative way to use that, I think. So this is clearly Squirtle. Um, Obviously. Looks like a yes. turtle, well, if we went back. So he looked like he was shooting his, it's been a while since I've watched Pokemon, but it looked like he was like shooting his water balls. I don't know, I don't really remember what they are. I'm sure everyone's gonna tell me in the comments out. So he added that to just make it extra clear that is Squirtle. And it looks like we have another Squirtle coming up. We're just going to show four video, four of these drawings now. We'll show four at the end. Um, this is amazing. Abine, it looks like to me, yeah. And, and that's, again, uh, I mean, the uh, one of the things Kevin said with watercolor is that it's, it's easy to make a mistake. This looks perfect. If there's a mistake there, they did a great job of, painting so over it or that, going with yeah. it or whatever because it looks so good and it's again, so good yeah i love the texture of the green both in the head and the arms and the legs and the tail and i love how it's not you can see the watercolor sort of i don't know if imperfection is the right word but you know what i mean it's not like a computer solid color green and yeah. I think that's a real cool advantage to doing it kind of the old fashioned way. And also what a nice background, Gina, let's look at the, let's admire, let's take a moment to admire that's beautiful. the background. Yeah. That sort of pinkish, orange, bluish, yellowish going on in the background there. You have a good eye for detail there, Aaron. Again, noticing that. So again yeah. I don't know, yeah. you know, I don't know how much of that was planned or how much of that just sort of came together by accident, but either way, it looks really I cool. I love it. So people are letting me know that what people do or, or what Squirtle's doing is shooting out bubbles when he's doing that. Also, people are saying this looks more like a, a Bulbasaur, but I think it's still Squirtle, but I don't know. We'll let the author chime in. I also want to make well, a comment that I've, I don't know why it's taken me so long to realize how funny it is, but like, I'm pretty sure most of these are scouts on their mom's Facebooks. So it looks like a bunch of moms are arguing about Pokemon, but it's just scouts using their mom's Facebook. It's pretty Maybe funny. Maybe it's their moms. We don't know. It, it could, could be, it could be the moms. moms. It could be. Well, thanks to all the moms who are letting their kids use their Facebook page. because that And can the dads. Be 
and yeah. the dads. That can be a dangerous proposition. So we appreciate that very much. And I also really appreciate our readers' expertise. I love how they they know so much more than I do, which is great. So yes. I'm very thankful to have them on here to correct me. Believe me, I do not mind it at all. In fact, I appreciate it and welcome it. Agreed. Um, and this looks like, is this Squirtle again? Well, I would say it's Squirtle. I, I believe it yeah. looks like a Squirtle, or it might even be a turtle, because Squirtle does look like a turtle. Right. So, who well, knows? So whatever it is, Kincaid, it looks like has taken some liberty with the color, right? All the Squirtles we saw earlier were green and Kincaid has opted for more of what looks like maybe a gray or a grayish blue color, which I like, sort of the personalization. And uh, speaking of details, I'm gonna call out what I believe is the grass, both in the bottom right corner and in the top right corner. Look how cool mm -hmm. that grass looks. Yeah, I mean, that is awesome. In the top right, those might be like trees and things like that. I love how he's got kind of actually all over the top in the background, the darker green, which could be maybe trees in the distance or, or maybe it's just a different kind of grass. But I love the texture and the colors in the background. That is really cool. It is cool. Makes me want to be out in a grass field, personally. Yeah. I love yes, that. Yes, it does. I know. Yeah. Yeah, the weather's really nice here today. So that is does have me itching to go outside and, 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 and play in the grass. I am going to put on my Squirtle costume and hang out outside after this for sure. Awesome. For sure. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so is everybody at home ready to do a little more drawing to top off the week? I am I so excited. I can hear you guys. I can hear you Yay. screaming. Yeah. Yay. This is going to be fun. Yeah. This is going to be fun. We're going to show some more pictures after the sketch we're about to watch. If you want to submit your own picture from today, from yesterday, from any day this week, or honestly, anytime you've sketched anything, we'd love to see it. We just might feature it in the magazine. We might feature it online. The place you can submit that is go.boyslife.org slash my own comic, I believe. We'll show that on screen later. First, oh, there it is. Go.boyslife.org slash my own comic. That's where you can submit your artwork Maybe we'll show some of it Monday just for fun. We'll be back at 2 p.m. Central for Trek at 2, of course. Um, of course yeah. That would be really cool. Do you want to do that, Aaron? I think that's a great idea. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll show some of like the – it's hard to choose. We've gotten so many, so much good stuff that it's hard to pick just a few to show. So, if, you know, I would just say if we don't show – if you don't see your artwork, we still thought it was awesome. We just had to totally. pick a few to show. So, yeah, well, I would love to do that. That would be great. Well, should we get to the main event? I think it's time. Pencils ready, okay. everybody. I think it's pencils and pens, right? Pens, no pen. pens. Pens ready. ready. No pens. Get your okay, pens here we go. ready. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Moran. I'm an illustrator and I'm a cartoonist. I also do the We Blows Woody cartoon strip for Boys Life magazine. Today, I'm going to show you how to draw Woody, and we're going to use pen and ink. Here are a few supplies that you can use. You can use an ink pen, which is like this. They come in different lengths. And also nibs. These points are called nibs. They come in different sizes and shapes. They're replaceable too. Gonna need some ink. Or if you don't have ink at home, you can use a fine Sharpie marker or some kind of marker with a fine point, some paper. You can also use a paintbrush, a cup of water, and a paper towel, because you never know when you might need one. So let me give you a few pointers on pen and ink. There's a couple techniques. Actually, there's four I have right here. The first one is called hatching. See all these straight lines? All you need to do is just draw some straight lines to give it depth. The closer the lines, it's going to make it darker. And that looks like it's a shadow there. That's hatching. Cross hatching. Gonna do the 
straight lines across, and then you're going to go lines down. The same thing here. The closer the lines, the darker it gets, the more depth it's going to cause. Now we can do random uh, lines, and that's just little squiggly lines, any kind of line you want. Again, the lighter the lines and the darker the lines together are going to look like a shadow and depth. The last one is stippling. Stippling is just these little tiny dots. And again, again like all three of them, if you put the cl them closer together, it's going to give your object more depth. So what we're going to do now is we're going to draw Woody. Now Woody's head is kind of like a square. So you want to start off with some kind of square shape. It's got big oval eyes. His nose kind of looks like a U upside down. Then his head starts to round off in here. Now we're going to work on his hair. Woody always has four spikes of hair on this side that comes all the way over like this. And he's got four pieces of hair hangs down like that put a mouth on him he's got freckles on this side he's got two dots on freckles on the top one on the bottom on the other side he's got one on the top two on the bottom he always has Three strands of hair here. And ears. Oops, I forgot his ears. So that's Woody. Now we're going to use our pen and ink. I'm going to go with the smaller. I'm just going to retrace over what I sketched. One thing you want to do, you want to make sure you don't drag your hand across the wet ink because it'll smear. And it'll make a mess. Sometimes I like to dab some of the extra ink off just in case because I don't want it to run. And I think you kind of get the idea. Then if you want, you can go in and you can add your cross hatching. Or we can do stipple again, just these little dots. Or if you want to just do hatch, hatching. And let's see where we can put some random 
those shapes. Remember, the closer together, and then when they get more separated, it's going to give you more depth. Now, we're going to flash forward because I already have a woody finished. And when it's nice and dry, you can also add a little water to the ink. Then you can add some more shadows. Now the more water you add, the lighter the ink gets, and it all gives it shape and form. So, this is Woody in pen and ink. Why don't you give it a shot and try your own? And after that, I got a good idea. Why don't you come up with your own Woody friend? And uh, he can be part of the gang. So take care, everyone. Be well and um, keep drawing. Bye. Okay, he laid a challenge down, Aaron. Sure did. I didn't see that coming. I did not that was either. <laughs> I also did not expect him to start the sketch with a pencil. I don't think mm -hmm. it means you can't start it with a pen, but he did start it with a pencil. So that's pretty cool. That's been kind of a common theme, right, that we've seen all week long. No matter what medium you end up using, even if it's on the computer, a lot of these guys start with a pencil on a piece of paper, which is, I didn't know that. That's interesting. I didn't either. Um, I love watching pen and ink drawings. I know I said that at the top of the show, but just when you see the hatching come in, I, I've never known that was what it was called. So like that's right. my first time using the word besides a, an egg hatching. But yeah, I, really, I totally knew what you were talking about there. Yeah, yeah. Well, now I do. I have a little knowledge. That's how you learn. But no, when they when they do the hatching, like oh, it just looks so cool. Like mm -hmm. you can have a lot of fun experimenting with that. I think. Absolutely yes. There's a lot of room for experimentation your own personal interpretation. You heard him at the end there, throw down the challenge and say, maybe consider trying to create a friend there to join yeah. the gang, which is a really cool idea. And it looks like, well, there's a URL right there where you can submit it, it looks like. Yep. If you want to submit what you drew today, what you drew any day, or if you want to work on it, because I have seen people with their pens when they're drawing, they like don't stop. I feel like it's one of those kinds where it's like you always feel like you could do a little more, you could do a little more shadow, you could do a little something. So take your time or submit it now if you got something done. Go.bullieslife.org slash my own comic to submit your work from the day. Um, I thought he made a pretty good point when he said you got to be careful not to move your hand across the ink while it's mm -hmm. still drawing. I'm very guilty of that even when I like write a birthday card or something. Absolutely. And I, Gina, I believe it or not, I have memories of from when I was younger trying to draw myself and smudging it on accident because I moved my hand across it. And I actually used to, it got to the point where I would take a second sheet of paper, like a real small sheet of paper and put it under my, so as I'm drawing, I've got that second sheet of paper, hold on, you can see it like under my wrist right here. And that yep. second sheet of paper, you know, stops it from smudging and blurring. So I don't know if that's oh. like professional or cool to do, but it, it, it did the trick for me when I, I was a younger that was a thing. Girl. Yeah, it worked for me. I, I don't, I'm not, that's not an authorized expert opinion, but it, it worked for me as a kid, a second sheet of paper, like cut out like a small sheet that you put underneath your, you know, wrist so you can rest right. your hand on the paper and still draw without smudging what's underneath it. Yeah. Okay. That's something to try. People experiment at home. Um, Eric says to make sure you pay attention to whether ink is waterproof or not. That's a good point. And yes, it is. I feel I'm laughing for one of our viewers, but also lamenting for them. Their pen run out of ink. Oh, I hate yeah. when that happens. Yes, yes, that that, that can happen. Yeah, it's, that's, that's okay. Really You'll be able to rewind this video after we're live. I would I would yeah. need to personally rewind it and watch that again, especially because I love how he drew the supplies you need. And then he gave us some examples of hatching. That was a lot of very good work Mike put into there. 
So yes. he's the illustrator for Weeblos Woody. Yes. Which is well, obviously what he drew. You know what else I liked, Gina, about that video that I, you know, maybe no one else thinks this is interesting, but I really liked the sound that it makes when he's scribbling on the sheet of paper. Anybody who has a chance to go back and watch it, again, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's a really cool kind of thing about doing it the old fashioned way is that sort of scratchy sound as you're drawing it on the sheet of paper. You don't, I don't think the computer programs make that noise, but maybe they do. It's kind of like the camera shutter sound that your phone can make if you wanted to, but it's not really, it's a fake sound, you know? I love yeah. that old fashioned sort of, you know, it just says Verbally that you're being, quill. You're being, yeah, you're being creative. It just shows to me that you are, it's the, that's the sound of creativity and in the process of making something, something neat. So he obviously used like the ink well, like dipping his pen in ink, and which is so cool. I've always wanted to do that, never have. But you could use any pen. You could use, yeah. he said you could use, I mean, if you look at the mirror badge pamphlet, it's pretty open about what kind of pen you use to. And that's illustrate. been a common thing, I think, all week. People have asked, what kind of pencil do I need? What kind of paper should I use? What kind of pen, what kind of paint brushes? And I think the common the common answer has been you can start off with something that's really pretty basic. There's no reason to go out on your first day and buy a bunch of expensive equipment. Start off with what you've got, or if you do buy something, just buy something really, really basic. And as you get a feel for it, as you start to do it multiple times, you might start to get a feel for what you like to do for your own style. And at the same time, you might start to see some of the limitations in the more basic equipment. And that's the time where it's okay if, you, if you're interested to go maybe start investing in a little bit more fancy stuff. Mm -hmm. I think so the pencil, paper, pen, paint brushes, the paints themselves, the, meat, uh, the, the paper that you paint on, the canvas, if you will. Also the time, making sure you're like mess proofing your space. That's a, I don't have the patience to do that. So that's why I venture away from paint sometimes, but then it makes it a lot more fun. I, I don't know. Right. I just want to know at home for our viewers, what was your favorite media to work with this week? Was it acrylics, watercolor, computer, pencil and paper, pen and paper? Very curious. Um, did I miss any of them? I don't think so. Did you say you said acrylic, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Let us know yeah. in the comments what what's your favorite media to work with. We've got a question. Who draws Tiger Adventures? Luckily, Eric's in the comments saying Mike Adair. So we've got, we just talked to like a small amount of our many illustrators for Boys Life this week. Maybe we'll be able to have some others on in the future to do some more illustrations because obviously you guys like it. You've been submitting a lot of artwork. I think we actually have a little more artwork to look at if we want to. I love it. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, Tessa great. has done an excellent, um, who is this, Gina? Squirtle. Squirtle. An excellent squirtle, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think she has taken some liberty with the color. I don't think we have we seen a deep blue squirtle like that yet. You know, it, it's different looking. No, I don't think we've seen those colors used, but I do feel that it looks like it's part of like it could belong in a Pokemon cartoon. Like I could, mm -hmm. it's not that far off. Does that make right. sense? Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I love I love the personal touches and it looks like Tessa, maybe she's you can't really see the the lines like the borders around the little parts of, of the of the subject there. And I don't know if she did it with a pencil and just painted over it and you can't see it or if she just did it like from scratch, which is really impressive. Either way, I like the right. look of it. You, know, you can tell the difference between this one and the ones that have the real stark black lines outline around it uh, yeah this I, I looks a lot like what kevin did not, but I, yeah i like it it's just it's just her own style 100 yeah. percent approved i like it she's got a clear style she's got a real yeah. she's got a point of view and she has something to say and you know what she's willing to say it she's brave yeah. i'm hearing it i'm hearing yeah, it too yeah yeah look at mckenzie very oh. nice Okay, see on my screen, I get it blocked out until it shows up live on Facebook Live. So I'm having fun guessing exactly what this is gonna be. It looks a little like a Furby. Is it possible that it is? Um, no. It it's says another Pokemon. Is Blathers a Pokemon? I'm gonna have to ask the experts. Is Blathers okay. a Pokemon, you guys? Let's ask our yep. audience. 
Blathers is a Pokemon apparently. And so I don't know what Blathers is supposed to look like, but it doesn't matter because I know no, that animal, like this Blathers. People are saying from Animal Crossing. See, the moms are arguing again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not, I've heard of Animal Crossing, but again, I'm not an expert on that. But the point is, I don't know what Blathers is supposed to look like. I have no idea if these are the right colors or the right shape, but regardless, I like what she's done here. It's Animal and, Crossings. Yeah. Okay. Animal Crossings. So I like what she's done here. <laughs> and I like the brown, you know, again, the different textures of brown that are on the top. You can see the, the natural way that the watercolor, yes. some spots a little bit darker, Whoa. some spots lighter. I really wow. like that. It's very precise. She did a great job. It's got symmetry to it for sure. I wonder mm -hmm. if she combined a few of the techniques throughout the week. Right. Um, I'm getting the correction that it's not moms arguing it's kids. Yes, that was our guess, but we weren't 100% sure. It's pretty funny. And y'all aren't really arguing either. You're being very respectful. So yeah. thank you. It's just, just really funny. It. We're just talking yeah. about it. Yeah. It, yeah. It's funny. So this is Blathers from Animal Crossing. Next up, Whoa. we've got a Squirtle. So Sophia ha has uh, created an, an interesting Squirtle. And again, I'm going to draw attention. To, I, I like the squirtle, but I also really like the background. Um, I yes. love the, 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 you can see the hint of a tree back there. I really, I think my favorite part is the sky. And again, I don't, I never know. I can't tell if she did it on purpose or not, but I like how the top of the sky goes like this, but on the side, she goes up and down with it. You can see the watercolor show that, and it looks really cool. And the butterfly back there looks great. I'm guessing, she had to do the butterfly first and paint around it maybe, or maybe you can do the butterfly on top. I don't think so. I think you'd have to do the butterfly first and paint somebody around it. Somebody told us, cool. remember somebody told us yesterday that um, they did like a watercolor with crayons on the top? Mm -hmm. yep, I'm wondering yep, yep. maybe this is that. I'm okay. not sure. Yeah. We call that mixed um, media in the fancy art business. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. We got another good debate going in the comments. We've got both somebody saying, I'm a kid on my mom's Facebook. And I also got, no, 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 we are all mothers. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should exactly what you would expect a kid to say. Who's trying to pull on us, you, know, so. you guys have me tricked down. This is real, really funny. Okay, so I, do we have one more piece of art or do we look at all four? We might have looked at all four. <gasps> one more. Lovely. Now, like, we got a Pokeball. Yes, and I like Madison. So is that, yeah, there's a Pokeball down there. I think that's the first one of those that we've seen. Um, I believe this Squirtle is winking at us, it looks like. Um, and I, I, boy, I like, again, I don't know why, I just like the, like the texture of the grass in the background and the variety back there of the different lengths of the grass. And I also like the yellow on this one, the yellow um, underbelly if you will, and the sort of pattern that Madison has created there with that darker yellow lines and then the lighter yellow colored in around it. Yes, yeah, so Eric commented on the last one, but it's true for this one too. He loves when the horizontal line isn't the bottom of the page. A lot of young artists use the bottom of the page for the ground, but both of these artists have created their own ground. Um, yes. Well, Lynn, whoever's on Lynn's Facebook and Christy, or not Christy's, Denise's, no, not Denise's. I just saw two calls for please say there's a Pikachu. I guess it's on Lynn's Facebook. There's not. We don't have a we don't have a Pikachu submitted. So we have an opening. We need you to draw a Pikachu. It's on you. Another, we need that. Another call to action. Yeah. We are we are missing yeah. a Pikachu in our lives. So anybody who wants to submit a Pikachu using any of the techniques we've talked about this week, I'm pretty sure would be welcome, right, Gina? Yeah, so the good, we got word while we've been on this Facebook Live that the August issue of Boys Life will feature some of these submissions. That's exciting, That's exciting. guys. That's very exciting, yes. That's grab something you August make Boys issue. Life. Yeah. And You're going to save that Boys cool. Life. Yes, exactly. That's a really that's a really cool opportunity. And um, yeah, that's cool that they get to see their own work printed in a, in a, in a magazine, the greatest magazine, as far as I'm concerned. It was my favorite. I definitely read it the most. Um, yeah, absolutely. 
what if they want to get their magazine if they want to get their art in the magazine if they want to get it on the website where do they submit it i'm thinking they probably should go to go.boyslife.org slash my own comic it's actually right below me gene it's not below you it's below me right here um it kind of extends off this way a little bit yeah everything's backwards right now yeah go.boyslife.org slash my own comic to submit your artwork. We've gotten a lot of really good artwork and I hope we just keep getting more and more and more. Um, our, our director said the other day that his, e his email was just pinging like nonstop with people sending in artwork, which I hope it does that again today. Go.boyslife.org slash my own comic. Get Lynn's, um, Facebook <laughs> Lynn's Facebook user says, he or she did submit a Pikachu. It's, a, it's there, so we will look for that. Okay. Don't you worry. I can't wait to put your comments to that picture as soon as we see it we'll we'll look through there's a lot so we haven't seen them all we've gotten a lot so yeah so yeah. it could be there's a picture in there that we just haven't seen yet we will look through them all um go.boyslife.org slash create your own comic if you missed any days this week it's not too late to go back watch all of our tutorials part of art o re it's been one great week Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. This has been Aaron? so much And I, I think that, I know we've said this every time, but I think the biggest takeaway from the week is everybody has got to start somewhere. And you might not think you're an artist, and you might not think you're any good. Our advice is to just give it a shot. See what happens. Don't worry about it. Do your best. Forget the rest. And mainly, send it in. That's what we really like you to send it in to us so we can take a look at it. Yeah, do your best, forget the rest, paint the art that's in your heart. Those were two of my favorite takeaways. Aaron, what was your favorite day of the week? Um, boy, do I have to pick a favorite? They were all so good. Um, yeah, they're all kind you of right in my mind. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, we started off on Monday, I thought, with Luke. That was a really cool conversation. I encourage everybody to go back and watch that if you haven't seen that yet. That was just cool because in addition to the artist of the week, we also had um, our, our new friend Luke on who is, a, yeah. is really knowledgeable at art and also really good at kind of explaining to everybody why we need art and, and what use art can have in our lives. Because you might be thinking, hey, it's just a picture. That doesn't mean anything. But that's, we've learned that it right. could be a lot more than that. Yeah. But all the artists yeah. we had on were also great. Eric did a great job. We have to say Eric and Kevin did a great job because we work with them every day. So we have to say mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But they also did. It's fair to say it, it was a five-way tie. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Yes. All the days yes. came in exactly the same place in my mind, number one. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I love that. Um, a lot of people are saying that they have tuned in all week. Thanks for the art camp. Their scouts had a great time. Their art wasn't messy enough, so they spilled a box of goldfish. Love that. Um, it was a lot of fun. They did the projects every day. They submil submitted some really good um, graffiti they want us to look at. That's cool. That's another kind of art. Um, there you go, yeah. There's a lot of Pokemons that were submitted. Maybe we need to do a whole week of Pokemon art. It sounds like there might be demand for it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, that's another thing I've learned this week is that Everybody still likes Pokemon, which is great. I, that's that's cool. Even Kevin, our friend Kevin's a big Pokemon fan. So, what do you mean still? It had a resurgence, Aaron. Like, yeah, I, I didn't realize that. That's what I'm saying. I think it's great. Yeah. Well, Pokemon—they <laughs> live on in your heart for sure. Whatever you say, yeah. I'll take the word for yeah. it. Totally. Okay. Well, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for being here all week. Scroll back if you're bored, you want to watch more videos. We've got a ton of live videos. And Aaron, you know what the good news is? What's the good news, Gina? Do you know what we're doing at 2 p.m. Central on Monday? Is it Trek at 2? It's Trek at 2. Trek at 2 is back on. I know a lot of people this week were super disappointed um, not having Trek at 2, you know, artery, mm -hmm. what's that? No, as Trek great at 2 is back on. artery was. I'm sure some people missed their old fashioned Trek at two. And yes. for those folks, please tune in on Monday. And if you haven't watched Trek at two, if you just signed up, if you just joined us this week for Art O'Ri, here's a little something you might not know. Come back Monday at two o'clock. You might not earn a merit badge, but we will do our best to entertain you with a virtual Trek through the pages of Boys Life Magazine. 
Yeah, same time, same place. Aaron and I like to read a story that was in Boy's Life, um, you know, in pretty recent history. Sometimes we take it back and we try to show you some pictures, maybe video. Yeah. It's just a fun time. Sometimes we have really cool photos or illustrations to go along with it or something like that. Very fun. And then I think, Aaron, we're um, not amending, but we were talking about how summer's in session. Things are changing. It's, you know, we just did artery. We want to make sure we keep giving you guys really good um, content and keep making things like artery happen. So we're thinking Truck It 2 is going to be a Monday, Wednesday, Friday thing, right? Starting, starting next week, I believe that is the plan. Yes. And I think what you'll see, the result of that is each episode of Truck It 2 will be better because we've got yes. time to plan it out and really devote a lot of attention to it. Yeah. And then we, at some point, we will have another really cool special event like Artery that hopefully yes. it's hard to compare. It's hard to, this is a really high standard we've set. So I can't guarantee it's be as going to be as good as Artery because that was really good. But we're going to do something really cool. We have a lot of let ideas know here. What you yeah. do. Yes, exactly. Gina and I are always talking about new ideas and things like that. We would love to hear if you guys have any ideas of things we could talk about whether it's related to Boy Scouts or even if it's not, if it's a family friendly topic that we could discuss, we'd consider that as well. Let us know. Yeah, We also like to have um, Scouts on to read their own favorite stories. So if you're interested in that message, the Boys Life Facebook page, there's, you know, lots of still going on guys. And just remember me and Aaron love doing this because we, you know, a lot of people got to stay in their pajamas all day for like two months and me and Aaron got ready every single day just so that we could do Trek it too. Exactly. <laughs> um, but we can't wait to do that again starting Monday. Looking forward to it, Gina. Okay. Well, I think that's it Hello. for Artery. It's been a, a great week. I'm a little sad it's over, but, you know, we'll live on forever on the Facebook page. Yes, it will. Go back and watch. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next week. Have a good weekend. Bye, everybody.